Hey everybody, welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study, and we're just going to go over a few things tonight, um, and we're going to talk mainly about um, commitment. What is commitment? Well, in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13 in the New King James, it says, Jesus said, he who endures to the end shall be saved. What does that mean? It means the person who's committed will make it. I know since we've been going through this COVID-19, everybody's having to stay home. Everybody's been binge watching uh, TV series and movies and all these kinds of things. And you know, you're, you're committed when you watch the entire series. But sometimes when you get right in the middle of that series, it gets really dull or really boring or the acting is not very good or the storyline takes some weird turn that doesn't make a difference. And you're at that point to where you're like, man, I am fixing to just switch whole series and start binge watching something else. Well, that's not being committed. That's, that's stopping when things go wrong or things just ain't quite the way you want them to be. See, sometimes life is like that. Sometimes your walk with Jesus is like that because sometimes it gets tough. Sometimes it gets even hard. But being committed to Jesus, being committed to your walk as a Christian, to God, means that you, the believer, can do it. You know, he said if you endure to the end, it means if you keep persevering, if you keep keeping on, you can do it. Here's an example I want to give you about a marathon runner. Um, marathon runners, they take off, but they don't take off as a sprinter. See, a sprinter, man, he could probably make that first half mile, quarter mile, a uh, mile even, uh, and be in front of everybody. But out after that, he just begins to lose all of his, um, all of his strength. Uh, he doesn't have the endurance to make the commitment to run the marathon. He can make the sprint, but he never can make the marathon. But you've got to look at when you're in that marathon of living for God until you go home to be with him, you've got a few perspectives that you can do. You can look at it as, oh, my God, this is a really long race. And, oh, man, the drudgery. It's, it's taken forever. Why, why is it like this? Why, oh, man, I'm getting so tired. Everything. You know, that's one perspective of looking at your, your walk with Jesus before you go home to be with him, you know? So why would we want to look at it like that? Even though it gets tough, why should we think of it as a drudgery or, or a hard way to go or, oh, it's so tough? But here's another perspective for you I want you to really think about. Uh, a lot of marathon runners, they look at it like this. Man, I'm halfway through this marathon. Guess what? Now it's only a half marathon. I only got halfway to go. Man, I can do this because I'm halfway there. They make that commitment to pushing through. They push through the pain. They push through uh, all kinds of weather and rain. And uh, some of the marathon runners, even, even those guys who do those uh, Ironman races, they start off and they swim for so many miles and then they run for so many miles and then they ride a bicycle for so many miles and, and they, they endure to the end. They push on until they get to the very end and they finish the race. And you know what? No matter if you finish first or you finish last, it's about your commitment in the middle. It's about being committed to God. If you're committed, you're going to make it. See, right now is not the time to quit. Right now is not the time to think, oh, you know, it's this COVID. It's never going to go away. All this kind of stuff. And, and why is God doing this? To us? That's not the mindset. The mindset is God's protecting you. If you're a born-again believer and you're covered in the blood, then you're covered with God's protection. And if you're a truly committed Christian, you'll stay under the blood. You'll walk under the blood. You'll walk in the Spirit of God. And when you walk in that Spirit of God and you're committed to the Lord, then God will show you the way to go. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. So you know what? When we walk by what we see, 
it's hard to be committed. I remember growing up, my dad would always say something to me, especially when somebody would say something bad or somebody would try to tell me some big tall tale. My dad would always go, son, believe nothing you hear and half of what you see and you'll be okay. But I'm telling it to you like this. Don't believe nothing you see, nothing you hear, but believe what the Spirit's talking to you. Believe what the Spirit's leading you through because the world will show you everything. Just like, he, just like Satan tried to do Jesus in the temptation. See, Jesus was in it for the long haul. He was enduring it to the cross. But Satan wanted him to give up in the middle. But that's not what he did. So we as born-again believers, we as Christians, we need to push forward. We need to persevere. No matter what we're going through, we need to push on. Because we have the greatest example, and that's Jesus Christ. He went on and he went to the cross and as he was nailed to the cross, he said, it is finished. So he ran the marathon for us. We don't have to pay the price. But through our walk in this world, we need to push on for him. We need to push on for Jesus. We need to push on for our own salvation. We need to push on because we know that there is a prize. We know that when we finish our race, we can walk into heaven and we can hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Now see, those are the words I want to hear. I want to have that perspective of it's not, it's not a long drudgery, but man, I'm almost there. I'm almost at the finish line and I'm making a commitment that I'm going to do it no matter what, whether Satan or demonic spirits or people or this world or any of that stuff. I'm going to push on. I'm going to keep on keeping on. That's a saying that I, I used to hear all the time. Now, see, this is something I want you to do. I want you to say this with me and make a commitment with me, if you will. I want you to say, I will stay focused and committed to Jesus. I will be patient and strive to achieve my goals. I will... Avoid letting fatigue, doubt, and criticism from others trip me up as I strive to fulfill what the Bible says I can. I will build and maintain strong relationships with people who can help me in this walk with Christ. Those are things you really need in your life. And if you're committed, those are some I wills I want you to do. Now, there's something else I really want you to do, too. I want you to write down a few things. I want you to write down any major goals in your life that you want to achieve. And let God work for you. Let God show you how to get there. And keep on. Keep that commitment. I want you to read the first chapter of James to get God's perspective on perseverance and commitment. Now... I really like what C.S. Lewis, or excuse me, I was going to say C.S. Lewis, Cecil uh, B. DeMille says, the person who makes a success of living is the one who sees his goal steadily and aims for it unswervingly. That is dedication. So you've got to look and you've got to want to live. You've got to want to live that life for God and not swerve, not go to the left, not go to the right, but you've got to keep on keeping on. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17 in the New King James says this, Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10 in the New King James says this, May the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you having suffered a while, perfect, established, strength, and settle you. In Luke chapter 14 and verse 28 in the New King James says, Jesus said, which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7 says this, the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint 
and I know that I will not be ashamed. Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 7 says this, Be strong and do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. And in Romans chapter 2 and verse 7, in the common English version says, He will give eternal life to everyone who has patiently done what is good in the hope of receiving glory, honor, and life that lasts forever. All of this was talking about making a commitment, making a commitment to God, doing what God wants you to do. Now, I'm going to ask this question. Have you made a commitment to Jesus? Have you made a, a commitment to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm going to live for you. I'm going to give you everything in my life. If you haven't, I want you to pray this prayer with me. This is the prayer of salvation. If you want to be saved and you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life and you want to make that commitment, this is the time. All you have to say is, Lord Jesus, I have uh, messed up. I have a past. I have sinned against you. And I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I ask you, Lord God, uh, to take away all of my sin and, turn, and help me turn away from all of it. I ask that you, Lord God, give me a 180 degree turnaround in my life. And God, not I don't ever want to go back to that. I want you to be the one who guides me. I want you to be the one who saves me. And I want you to be the Lord of my life. And I want you, Lord God, to save my soul. And I truly, Lord God, mean this from the bottom of my heart. And I love you. And I praise you. And I thank you for saving me, God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and you earnestly meant that prayer from the bottom of your heart, then I believe you got saved. Now it's time for you to find a church to go to. It's time for you to find a Bible-believing and Bible-teaching church, one that follows the Scripture, one that teaches the whole Bible. Now, if you're a born-again believer, I want to ask you this. Have you committed everything to God? Have you committed every part of your life over to God? You're saved, but maybe you're struggling somewhere. Maybe there's an area in your life that you need help with. I'm going to ask you to commit it. To commit. Make a commitment to change that. But the only way to do that is you need to make a commitment say, Jesus, I need your help in this area. Jesus, I need you to help me. As I commit to doing this, I need you to change it, God. I need you to give me the strength. I need to follow you. And in faith, I believe it'll happen. Now, I want you to believe. I want you not to have doubt. I don't want you to fear it. When you make this commitment, don't make it out of thinking that you have to, but do it because you want to and do it believing without a doubt that Jesus is going to help you through it. If you'll do that, I believe God has got this under control. So we're going to let you go tonight, our Bible study. We're going to conclude it with that. Um, I want to give you an opportunity if you want to give. Remember, you can go to our website and you can click on the Give tab and you can give online or you can send any kind of gifts or offerings or ties in to P.O. Box 369, Lepanto, Arkansas, 72354. With that, God bless you the word and you have a wonderful, blessed evening.